Okay. Hello, dear Leslie. Leslie Neeps, how are you today? I'm great. How are you doing? Very good. Very good. Well, Lovely I to see you. Yes, me too. I say hello to you from Mexico. I know you are in San Francisco. And we welcome you from the ISCA board for this interview today so you can share it with the members of ISCA about your workshop. So I want to name your workshop, which is called Money, Inequality, Justice, and Personal Financial Wellness. Yes, your it's a mouthful. <laughs> yes. Yes, your, your workshop will take place on Thursday, April 15th, 2021, from 18 to 20 hours, 6 to 8 p.m. Central European time. Right. So every member might have to look for their specific time schedule uh, to locate your workshop, but we are so happy for your offering, Leslie. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yes. So would you like to share with us what uh, do you intend to develop and share with the community through your workshop? Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I think that title kind of tips my hand a little bit. Um, I, I was trying to include a bunch of stuff uh, that we don't always include when we take on this topic. Um, I, I, in most corners of Constellations work, I think we're, we're familiar with working with issues of money, wealth, um, helping people if they're stuck with unable to earn or overly indebted, and, and exploring this from the ancestral point of view, which is what's going on in our fam personal family history and our intergenerational family history um, that might be causing us to have some disorder around money or wealth or personal finances. Um, and we're going to be looking at that. But we're also going to be looking at something else, which I've discovered also really impacts our personal experience around money and personal wealth, which is the money culture we live in, right? Um, it's the economies that we live in. Um, most of us, modern day capitalism, although some people maybe in, in other economic contexts. Um, and that as Bert Hellinger, the founder of Constellations Work taught us, um, all of these systems impact us, the, the ancestral systems, but also the contemporaneous current day systems also impact us. So the question becomes, can I have what I want and need around money? You know, we need to pay the rent, we, we need to be able to care for ourselves and uh, maybe have fun from time to time, um, save for retirement, things like that. Can ha I have what I want personally and be in good relationship with the larger money culture that I'm a part of, which itself is also disordered? Um, our, our larger economies with its inequalities uh, and and how do we find a good place for ourselves um, taking into account what we've inherited emotionally from our ancestors and our lineages um, and being good relationship with the larger economic world that we're all a part of. And that's what this exploration is going to be about. Um, there's going to be a lot of um, looking at our ancestral histories, uh, looking at the larger culture that we belong to, but also really importantly, um, some, taking some time to ask the questions, what are my values around money? What's important to me about money? And once I've clarified that, how can I move towards making choices that support those values? So that's sort of the first, first sort of framework in um, what I, I'm gonna try and wrestle with us in and help us out with uh, in, in the two hours. Great, Leslie. And putting, uh, quoting a little bit of your words previously, uh, you mentioned in this systemic perspective, um, how is our relationship with money? Is it out of real choice or out of entanglement? Would right. you like to speak about that? 
Yeah, yeah. Money is a powerful symbol, isn't it? Right? Yes, definitely. Um, it, it just catches all kinds of things, yeah? Mm -hmm. So if we have, say, complicated relationships with our parents, there's a good chance that's going to get projected onto money, right? Um, if we have complicated relationships with our ancestors or they had great suffering around wealth or poverty or they themselves were perpetrators or there were inequalities or great losses, um, that can get projected onto money. Our need for love and meaning and well-being can get projected onto money. Um, and then, of course, the, the, the values we have about the kind of communities we want to live on, in, you know, uh, socially just communities that we long for. Um, how is money all wrapped up in that? Um, I, I wouldn't imagine unraveling all of that in two hours. Um, but, but there are all these different ways in which, um, as a result of all this, it's hard to have what we might call a clean relationship with money because it's carrying all these other meanings. And if we can sort of deal with those meanings separately, then maybe we can just start making strong choices about what we want with money in, al yes. in alignment with our personal values about that. Yes, yes, right. So maybe I guess it all begins with getting to know the system where we are standing in. Yeah. Uh, because I imagine in different cultures, different economies, uh, the system plays out differently. Mm -hmm. Although right. we are in different systems, we can still find our value and our choice, right? Right. Yeah. Well, um, as much, you know, I always like to put at the end of these things, enough. Uh, enough. We're all embedded in things that are larger than us. And that's a big part of, of, of Constellation's work is when we acknowledge, you know, this is bigger than me. Mm -hmm. Right. Capitalism is bigger than me or... Um, authoritarianism, if that's the kind of system you're dealing with, um, is bigger than me. Um, um, and being able to find a way to sort of bow to that and acknowledge that. And then from that place, make the choices we can in a really empowered kind of a way. Um, and, and we're always embedded in multiple systems. So there's the family systems and the economic systems, our religious systems, our racial and ethnic systems, our gender systems. There's all kinds of belongings. We've got a bunch of belongings um, and all of those are impacting us um, and, and, and finding ways to acknowledge and honor those belongings so that we can be strengthened into stronger choice rather than all this unconscious choosing we're doing. Like, you know, how am I ending up indebted all the time? Well, that's, that's an unconscious choosing. Yeah. An entanglement, right, of some sort. Or, or how am I making a lot of money, but I'm never happy in my work? Okay. Mm -hmm. I wonder what, that, what belonging that's in service to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how you can acknowledge it so that then you can be free to make the choice that you would like to make. Exactly, exactly. And I feel wonderful uh, that through this process, you are going to offer us a way to approach money without having to earn it or get created in such ways that are maybe not our personal elections. Yeah. So that is beautiful. Yeah, I mean, this is really, really important because many of us, um, when we start at some point in our adult lives to wrestle with, oh, I got some problems with money. I need some help with money, right? Um, we'll start looking for different expertise, you know, people to help us out with that, mm -hmm. coaches or programs or perspectives um, who can give us messages about what's right about money, what you ought to want. Um, you should want more, you should want less, um, you should live more simply, you should, you know, um, have a retirement of millions. Um, there are different understandable um, authorities out there uh, telling us what we ought to want and need with money. And what is so much more useful is for us to clarify what our value is. If you want to live simply on the earth and, you know, be a, be a surfer bum, uh -huh. Great. Be in alignment with that, you know, 
Um, yeah. If you want to live in a gift barter economy, be in alignment with that. If you if you have kids and you want to really save for their college education, and that's going to require a fair bit of money, then those are your values, and you'd be in alignment with that instead of these various um, authorities out there that might be telling you, you're doing it wrong. You don't want the right things about money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that once we know our, our own values, then we can start disentangling it from more unconscious loyalties. Because I'm what I was just describing are conscious yeah. Um, yeah. sort of uh, rules, but then they're all the unconscious ones, you know? Um, I can never really be successful because my parent, my, my my ancestors were all poor and barely got by. Right? That's that's a more unconscious kind of a loyalty. We want to clarify that the conscious values as well as the unconscious um, uh, systemic influences. Yes. Uh, so again, so we can get more and more enough, and again the word enough, towards um, choice. Choice yes. about this stuff. Yes, exactly. Loyalties also have beliefs that belong to to the different systems, and we have to start, uh, uh, how to say, um, taking out piece by piece and reviewing the whole, right? Right, right. And just we, we keep bowing to these things that that um are part of the reason why we're here at all, mm -hmm. right? Our ancestors or our larger economic systems. These, this is you know part of what brought us to be here, um, but which we may um, not want to follow. Um, those patterns or those ways of living in the world. So how do we bow to that without being in resistance? Without being, you know, in in a kind of um, uh, rebelliousness that just keeps us uses up a lot of energy and doesn't direct us where we want to go yeah uh, yes. which may be some different values yes also right now as i listen to you um some some images started to come in in terms of those who who died early those destinies of of those in the family who died early or had difficult destinies or were left behind or forgotten and how much all of those excluded or forgotten people have an impact unconsciously in this creation of money. Oh gosh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Particularly when it comes to money, um, ancestral poverty, mm -hmm. um, ancestral significant loss of wealth, or ancestral misuse of wealth, in in the Americas, this is often ancestors who own that their wealth was people, aka slavery, mm -hmm. right? Um, these are the main sort of um, ancestral entanglements that um, are can be influencing us today around money, um, and which, um, if we can find a way to give a good place to an honor and put give 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 their place for. Mm -hmm. uh, then we can bow to it and and make some different choices. Um, the the slaveholding one is a particularly interesting one because I mean obviously very tragic, but it's often the key for some of my clients who um, find money to be dirty or yucky, and they you know as much as they know they need it they kind of don't want it, mm -hmm. you know it feels bad. And then we uncover that they, uh, their ancestry is a history of owning other people. Oh, wow. And of course, of course, wealth feel, will feel ugh, because it is yes. when, it, when, it, when our wealth consists in owning other people, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we honor that history um, in a way that makes, both makes it easier for us to have wealth in our day, but also to make different choices that really re respect the dignity of human beings. Yes. Which is yes, an ongoing yes. struggle because money yes. is so wrapped up in oppression, even to this day, it's very hard to have a lot of wealth in a way that isn't extractive or, you know, using other people. It's, it's, um, it's, it's very serious business. Yes. Yes. I, I, uh, Remaining in good conscience or knowing how to approach bad consciousness 
it's all bad conscience is important, right? right. <laughs> also in this path. Yeah. Yeah. And all we can ask of ourselves is the more we bring these things to consciousness, it frees us to make choices that are in alignment with our values today. Yes. Which is itself is a big enough thing. I mean, that that's not an easy thing to do either. Um, but yeah. but it frees us for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is so wonderful. So yeah. Leslie, you, would you like to share an insight, uh, an exercise, a meditation or something with the community to prepare them to walk into your workshop? Yeah, uh, it, not exactly an exercise, but if you're listening right now, I just invite you to take a moment, maybe come to your heart and just ask yourself, like you've never asked, you know, what the heck, you've never asked the question before. Pretend like you've never asked this question before. What's important to me and my values around money and wealth? As if no one had ever told me the right way to think about this. Yeah. Just start fresh. And then start to hear what your heart says in response. Some of you may end up focusing in on um, ways that you want to have and use wealth. Some of you may start to focus in on longings you have about the world and equality and wishing things were different about that. Or it might be, you know, I just wish I didn't have to worry about paying the rent every month. Right? Whatever shows up, just really honor that. And then you can come on back and what this workshop hopefully will do is expand that exploration, but also clear up the entanglements so you can move towards that in the way that you would like to, instead of, you know, hitting these walls that make it feel like I can't have what my values say. Um, it, that feels empowering, hopefully. That's my yes. hope. Anyway. Yes, Leslie. Thank you so much. I think this is something that we can start looking into, looking inside and preparing ourselves to, to look in your workshop and work through it. So Leslie, thank you so much for this time together, for opening your workshop to the community. And I want to invite all the community to visit our website, isca2021.com. Uh, you will find there all the presenters, all the time and schedule, um, videos, uh, a link for registration, and, uh, and everything you might need to take in account to be available for our workshop, which will take place April 14th to April 21st. Okay, so see you then. Yeah, I'm so, I, I'm excited to attend these workshops with people I love and people I haven't met before and I don't know their work. Um, so I really hope people come. I think it's an awfully good deal for the amount of workshops that you get. Um, and I don't think anyone will leave disappointed. Uh, I don't know, for sure. They, they will leave with a full basket. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Okay, so we'll say goodbye for today. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.